as you know, the Bible is one. There are 66 books there, but they form one story. The story of God's relationship with people. And there are people in the Bible that are mentioned by name, and some of them are mentioned several times. And if they do appear like that, then we should not just dismiss it as a story. There are lessons to be learned. There are calls for our attention as people of God. And one of those people I invite you to look at with me is Noah. Noah lived very early on in the story of God's relationship with us. And his story starts in book five, chapter five, sorry, of, the gen of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. And the first thing we have to notice is that he lived at a time where the earth was full of violence and wickedness. So what we see today, what we complain about is not new. Like the proverb said, there's nothing new under the sun. It's only that we forget and we tend to have a filtered memory. So when we look at the past, we always think that the past was better, but it was not. It's only that people are now more aware of what's happening and their consciences are refined so that they find it more and more difficult to accept violence and wickedness. But this is recorded as being the main thing at the time Noah was born. Noah was born at a time where people lived very long lives. 900 years was common. Now, God noticed Noah because he walked with him. He was different and he lived a constant consecration with God. At the time, the Holy Spirit was not living in people. Jesus had not come, but Noah was a faithful man. Now, the time God called him to a special mission, he was already married. He had got three sons, and those three sons were married themselves. So Noah was getting older, even by the standard of life those days. Now God called him and talked to him. And that's the first thing we learn, that the call of God goes with a dialogue, with a speaking of God to, into our lives. God told him, look, I want to share my mind with you. I'm fed up with what's happening. I need a reset. I'm going to send a flood, but I've chosen you to maintain life on this earth that I've created. And so he called him, he told him to build an ark, a big boat, just like the transatlantic boats we see, these mighty boats. People brag about them, but the ark was mighty. It was three story tall and it was designed to house many, many living beings. So he told Noah to start building on dry ground. And the boat he gave him instructions to build was huge. So what we learned from there was that God has a plan. And even though in his mission in the world, is described as talking to one person, here Noah. The call implied and impacted his whole family. Not only his wife, that was part of him, because two shall be one, as God said, but also his children and their wives. And if there had been kids additional, it would have impacted them as well. First of all, because what happens to your husband or your wife does change your life. For example, if your husband gets sick, well, you have to start caring for him. 
if he changes job, then it will impact your budget and everything about it, your timetable. And his children were also impacted in the sense that they were family. Also, the fact that he was told to build such a boat meant that his family had to contribute. God expected that the boat was too big for him to build alone. So his whole family was involved in building that boat, although it's not written, but that's the reality, as we can see. Also, it lasted a long time. He didn't build the ark in one day at all. And think of the impact it had on the neighbors. Probably everybody was laughing at him, mocking him, making this difficult for him because he had to ask for wood, he had to negotiate for all the bits and bolts for the boat. So the whole neighborhood was involved in one way or the other. And then after that, when he entered the boat in the rest of the story, we know that he housed a huge number of animals, insects, birds, and the travel, the journey lasted for virtually one year. So during that time, his family was also involved feeding all these animals, caring for them, cleaning after them, as well as living that life, the same life that Noah was living in the boat was the life his family also lived in the boat. A boat without a window. And they had to wait. They didn't know what was happening. They had to endure, to be patient, exactly like Noah was. So this is a challenge for you and I. I want to tell you, if one is called, it is a story of a family. Abraham was called by God. At the time he was called Abram and his name was changed. This was a family call. And every individual call is also impacting a family. So don't pretend that you don't know, that you can just continue living your life as if nothing has happened. You have to, if you are married to someone, and the husband is called or the wife is called by God to do something special, you're expected to support the person. Just like my husband supported me. He has been supporting me all his life. He has been cooking for me for years when I was unable to cook Nigerian dishes when we were there. He was even doing the market for me when I could not speak the language yet. There are a lot of, of things that are expected. You have to pray for the person. You have to support them in prayer and in acts of kindness. So don't think that when an individual is called, that's the end of the matter. We are not individuals. We are all built for relationship. And when God calls your husband or your wife or your daughter or your son, there will be a change in your life and you have to surrender it to the Lord.